Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're here today to look at a couple of phono preamps that a viewer sent to me to check out, listen to, evaluate, and just give them my opinion on if I thought I could improve them to do a little upgrade on them. So, first we have this obviously handmade corn tubes. Never heard of them. It's got a toroidal transformer. It's got three 6S and 7s. It's got a 5Z4 rectifier tube. These are like copper clad PC boards that they built it out of, which is kind of a cool idea. It's copper finished and I think they, it looks like they sprayed a little clear on it. And It's a pretty cool looking little unit. I really wanted to like this, but they missed the mark on the EQ. And that's obviously what a phono stage is doing, is the RIAA equalization from what's on the vinyl to what it's supposed to sound like and the interpretation thereof. And this one crunches everything right into the middle. The high end is rolled off, not just missing sparkle or tingle or pixie dust for your ears, whatever you want to call it. It's just not there. And the same on the bottom end, it just rolls off. And all of the sounds compressed into, I would guess, probably 200 to 5K hertz. And it rolls off on each side of that. I'm gonna run a test on it. I need to play with my audio analyzer suite and figure out how to you know, test these phono preamps. Well, we're gonna do that in a future video. But for now, me and a couple other people have listened to this and it just it's not there and it's point to point wired but i don't have any schematic really would take a ton of work to reverse engineer what they've done and honestly i'm not an electrical engineer and trying to redesign some riaa equalization is way above my pay grade so we're going to take a pass on this guy so the next one we listened to was this little bear. And it's obviously a little made in China unit. It comes with some 6N2 tubes and a 6Z4 rectifier. And the person that sent it to me said that they couldn't get the 12AX7 switch to work. It's got a switch where you can either use the 6N2s I think that's the same tube the A10 uses or 12AX7s which is a much more common tube and the problem was he tried rolling in a 6X4 US rectifier tube and the pinout's totally different so that's why when he did the tube swap it didn't work when I flipped these switches to 12AX7 lit up and worked great and also the Voltages seem to be right in line of what they're supposed to be, even though the transformer says it's rated for 110 instead of 120 volts. So the heater voltages are good. This thing was ready to rock, so we hooked it up. First, we tried the 6N2 tubes, and it sounded pretty good compared to my, I'm going to call reference, the EAR834 clone that I really love. A little sparkle on the top end wasn't there, like detail was missing, and then the bass wasn't as strong. But otherwise, it sounded really good. Had a nice clean sound. Was a little noisy. So I pulled out the 6N2 tubes, and I rolled in a set of Electroharmonic 7025 preamp tubes, which are a drop-in for a 12AX7, just a low noise version, and all the noise went away. It's now a nice quiet amp and still a little bit of sparkle missing and a little bit of bass missing and improved it. So if you have one of these and you want to, you know, improve it without going inside it and just want to roll some tubes, put some 7025 electroharmonics or some RCA's new old stock are also nice. The Motorola new old stock 7025's are really good too. So... Roll some tubes in it. I think you'll like it, for, especially on a budget, but we're going to try to improve it. 
We're going to open it up. We're going to put some better coupling caps in it. I'm going to show you how I feel like they missed the mark on sizing the coupling caps. So we're going to reduce the size of one, double the size of another one, and then come back in a future video and compare this to my EAR-834 and possibly some other funnel preamps. So let's get to fixing this amp. Okay, so first let's look at the schematic here, and this is a very similar design to my EAR-834 clone that I really love, but there's a lot of little differences too. And I don't want to come in here and like replace, you know, a dozen resistors trying to make this thing exactly like my 834 clone. And it's also not even operating on the same plate voltages. And so overall, it sounded pretty good. And I don't want to do something that totally screws up the RIAA equalization. But there are some things that are done wrong in this amp. So let's look at them. First thing is no idea why they have a 62K resistor here on the input. Every moving magnet phono cartridge I've worked with wants to see a 47K resistor in this position. And so we are going to install a 47K resistor here in this position. The other thing that I don't like is this capacitor is the right value. It seems like it's a pretty cheap one, but they at least hit this number right. When I do the calculations versus the grid leak resistor that it's operating against. The problem starts with this one here. There is no reason for this capacitor to be this large. And I found that too large a capacitor can suck the sparkle or the nice kind of airy top end out of a tube device. Especially when we have three capacitors in the signal path. So we got this one, we got this one, we got this one. So we're going to replace this with a 0.1 UF Bundorf aluminum wall cap. We're going to replace this one with a 0.1 UF aluminum wall cap. And then the other thing that I think they did wrong is this one is actually too small. When you consider the impedance that this amp is going to be driving, this needs to be a 1 UF coupling cap. So we're going to change this cap, this cap, this cap, and then we're going to come in here and put a 47K resistor here across the input. And I think that's going to be it. Besides installing some nicer electroharmonic 7025 tubes in place of these China 12AX7s. The other thing to note is you cannot replace this 6Z4 with the US version, I think it's a 6X4, total different pinout. And there's really no reason to replace this China rectifier. They work fine. I did measure the heater voltages and they're all within spec. And the switch that switches between the two different tube types, that all works right too. So let's dive into replacing these components. So we got the board out of the amp, and I love it when I can learn things from my viewers. Somebody gave me a tip of applying some flux to the joints that I want to try to suck the solder off of. So we got Q-tip, got a little flux, came in here and painted the terminals or the solder joints that we are going to be desoldering. And as you saw me dabbing them, 
I'll go over once again the ones that we are going to be desoldering. And it's going to be these two here, these two here, these two, and then these two. Well, actually, hold on a sec. Let me look at this one more time. It's going to be these two. This one and this one. So we want to desolder these big caps, these .47 UF caps that they have in there. Then we're going to come in here and do the .1 UF caps. And then we're going to come in and desolder these two 62K resistors, which would be R16 and R17, as shown in the schematic. So, get our, our tip clean. Get it tinned. So we have a nice fresh tip to work with while we're desoldering these. And we want to just mop up as much of the solder off these joints as we can. And you can see it just wicks up the solder out of that joint. And I have to say, painting those with flux actually really does make this desoldering, wicking stuff work much better. So then, I'm going to heat this joint up. And pull one end of that off. And then the other. And then come in here and do one last little mop up here. We've got a nice hole left of the board to put our new capacitor in. Let's go ahead and get this one loose. And I didn't show you pulling the board out of the amplifier, but I will show you reassembling it. And instead of doing what a lot of videos do, saying that the assembly is just the reverse of the disassembly, we're going to do it the other way. And the disassembly is the reverse of assembling it. Because in some ways, I think it's harder to put stuff back together than it is to take it apart. Just make sure you have like a coffee cup or something like that to put all the screws in while you're working on it. So you don't lose any of the hardware. And these caps being these big square ones are actually pretty easy to desolder. And there's two of them. Now these say they're Wema caps. I highly doubt these are real Wema caps. But I can't say for sure, but I'd be shocked at the price point of this amp that this thing's using real Wema caps. And that's one of the reasons we're also replacing them is those are probably fakes and it doesn't hurt anything to kind of double check where you're working so you don't want to solder the wrong joints but we've got this one here and thank you to the viewer with a tip about putting a little flux on these joints that I'm going to desolder because that really does make this wick work much better. I mean it's basically sucking all the solder out of the joint now. And I know other people use some of those little sucking tools. They call them solder suckers. But I've had good luck with this wicking stuff 
And well, it is a little more expensive, and you have to replace it because it gets saturated with solder. It's definitely better than destroying a circuit board that you can't replace. The other nice thing about this little project is there's plenty of room to install these caps so we're not going to have to go through any gymnastics installing them into this little preamp. Again one of the nicer features of this little preamp is it does have a volume control on it so you can control the output to match an amplifier that something like maybe the R8 that's got a little hot of an input that you can gain match the phono preamp to the main integrated amplifier and get the volume control like working in a really nice place instead of only being able to use like the first 20 percent of the volume control which makes things like the remote control super touchy. I'm really happy with the way these are just coming right out. May have to pause the video, kind of look at the schematic and the traces, and make sure that I'm putting these new caps in the right spots. I know that the small cap over there it's going to be a direct replacement for a 1UF, but we're replacing one of these 4.7 UFs with a 0.1 and the other one with a 1UF. And I need to make sure that I'm putting those in the right place. Okay, that's all the big caps. I'm going to come in here and do these two small ones, and then desolder those two resistors. And I'll probably go ahead and put those two resistors in and these two smaller caps. And then, like I said, I want to study the board a minute and make sure that we're installing these new caps in the right place in the board. And then, once we get all these components soldered in place, I can show you reassembling the little preamp. And then we'll go do a listening test to it and see if this improved this little amp. Like I said, it wasn't a bad sounding little preamp just out of the box. The tubes it came with were a little noisy, which honestly a lot of 12x7 tubes are. Especially when you're using them in a high gain situation like these tube phono preamps are. I'm learning sometimes you have to come in and do a little bit of solder wicking on the other side of it to get the hole clear. Somebody did give me a little tip, which unfortunately I don't have a toothpick here to try. But that was another little tip someone had is to just use a toothpick to poke the holes back out in these boards to get the hole cleared out to reinstall a new device. That worked as well. Okay. I'm probably not going to edit a lot out of this video like I do sometimes. Because some people have replied in the comments that they enjoy just watching me soldering and or desoldering on stuff we might edit a little bit but pretty much gonna just show you this one in real time doing this repair And these aren't WEMA, they're 
MKT EROs. If they're even that. Who knows what they are. But we know the capacitors that we're putting in are super nice ones. So Let's hope this upgrades this little preamp into something that the owner can actually really enjoy. And I think he will. His main complaint was it was noisy, which I heard from the tubes. And that it just didn't have a ton of bass. Which I believe is him driving a solid state amp with this device with too small of a coupling cap on the output. And we saw that on the color preamp that while the smaller cap worked okay, increasing the size of that cap definitely improve the low frequency response. I know there's a a measurement called the three decibel roll off point and you would think okay that's where we want to set the roll off point to you know maybe like 20 hertz for the three decibel and that would be fine but from my understanding, you actually want to multiply that times 10. Which would mean you would want to set the low frequency roll-off point at about 2 hertz. And let me get my little... Let me get a little tool here to pry these resistors out. And if you don't have any of these, these little sharp tip jewelers pliers, you can get them at Michael's and a lot of places. And these are just some cheap ones. They're really handy for working on, you know, desoldering or anything on these kind of, you know, circuit boards and amplifiers. And wire out of the way so we don't burn it up. make it a lot easier if you can get the hole cleared out where you can go ahead and stick the component in and then solder it just like you would if you were working with a new board rather than trying to heat the pad up at the solder and push the new component through so it is important that these resistors are as close to 47k as you can get so either Maybe you have a pile of them that you can measure through and try to find some that are really close to 47K. Or go ahead and spend a little more money and get some precision 47K resistors when you're buying them. And that way you'll make sure that you get some that are as close to 47K as possible. Because this is a pretty important value to match the impedance that your photo cartridge is wanting to see. I'm doing this and also trying to keep an eye on my video camera, make sure we're still recording. And way too many times I've. been recording away like this or working away like this and I look up and 
we're not recording anymore. And I think I'm going to try to find a little bit finer solder for doing this work. That roll is a little on the fat side. That was 050 solder, and this 032 is a little bit nicer for working with circuit boards. Again, keep the tip nice and clean, and, and I run my iron at 750 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll have to, excuse me, I don't know what that is in Celsius you folks that use that unit of temperature measurement and there's our resistor soldered in place and I'll put a link in the description to these little flush cutting pliers that I use with circuit boards they're nice and small and it's funny, I hear people talking about these things not staying sharp or having to replace them real often. I've been using this same pair for probably two years and haven't had any issues with them. So we're going to go ahead and solder these two capacitors in and then I'm going to take a short break and study the circuit board and figure out exactly where we want to put the other capacitors. Actually, let me stop a minute. I'm going to figure out which direction these caps need to go in and which ones need to go where. And maybe put a fresh set of batteries in the camera. And we'll come back and finish this up. Well, we got a good bit done. I decided to go ahead and split this into two videos. So there'll be a part two coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. Thanks all you Patreon folks. And thank you to all of you folks that have donated either money or sent gear for me to review like these two preamps so I can create content for you guys. And until the next video, have a nice day.